So, Mr. Spock to Captain Kirk, Trump the Fed. Now, we've all seen these Star Trek movies where Mr. Spock manages to get to the central computer and debug the software and save the whole civilization. Or maybe he'll zap that central faulty co controller, save the whole civilization. Well, fixing the Fed is a Spock move, too. Now, people may be offended that I would bet that I'm the smartest man on Earth. But I have the same education as Mr. Spock. I have a degree in applied science, grade 17 in systems engineering. And I specialized four years as teaching assistant of Canada's only mathematics of gambling course. So, like Mr. Spock, who always could figure out the odds, I can also pick winners with math and then engineer getting the pot. So, don't snicker before you hear this Spock move on how we can trump the Fed. If the Fed raises interest rates and they're supposed to be independent of the administration, they will crash the economy. There are huge volumes of very low interest rate loans out there. And as soon as they jack up 1%, suddenly there's huge debt service they have to now start paying extra. And if they jack it up 2%, corporations are going to have to start laying people off. Massive layoffs across the country and no amount of inducing businesses to bring their business back to the States is going to help it if the Fed is crashing the economy. Now, when they say jobs are leaving the country, they really mean paychecks are leaving the country. Lots of jobs still to be done. Why do we need foreign paychecks to come back to do this here if it needs to be done here? Must be a way of coming up with local, national paychecks too. So, quantitative easing in 2008. Trillions created and loaned interest-free to the banks. So they could loan shark it out to the citizens and the governments, even again. Now, quantitative easing for the people has been suggested by Jeremy Corbyn in uh, Britain, where he says, hey, why shouldn't governments get interest-free loans to do infrastructure too? As well, the Bank of Canada has a case um, in Canada, federal court, by the Comer Group, which is demanding that they revert to the old days before 1974 when they could borrow interest-free from the Bank of Canada for infrastructure. And in 1974, Pierre Trudeau shut the interest-free window, forced all those provincial governments and the national government to start borrowing from private banks at interest, and the national debt started growing exponentially, Ontario's debt started growing ex everybody's debt started growing exponentially once interest became attached to their infrastructure loans. And we've been paying debt service ever since. Two trillion in Canada. Provincially and federally, municipally, we've paid in debt service, which is over 70 grand a piece would be in our account if that interest-free Bank of Canada window hadn't been closed. As well, I am a proponent of quantitative easing for the citizens, too. Why should the, only the government and the banks be allowed to get interest-free loans from the federal central bank? Why not citizens? What would we do with them? Well, for, well you log on like PayPal, open an account, and then you'd look at your mortgages, 10% here, 8%. You'd cut checks to pay them off and owe the money to the Bank of Canada or the central bank. Once all your interest-bearing debts are paid off, and those banks now got their money, you now have a principal of your debt at the central bank where all your payments are going to go against the principal from now on. So all you're really doing by opening up a supranational central bank interest-free for citizens is going to be shutting down all the private loan shark banks. Ah, oh, so that's what happens. Now, quantitative easing for the citizens was suggested in Greece. An online citizen's backup, plan B, if they're going to shut down our regular money. And he was out of there three days later. Now, Switzerland is voting on an online currency system for their people. Well, here's the point. Once you've got an online national network, you don't need any private banks anymore. And if it's interest-free, there can't be inflation. It's time-based. You're going to work it off just like you work off your debts at the other banks with interest. Just a lot less work. 
So, how would it work? Well, let's say, well, first of all, the interesting thing about this is that now with Donald Trump in charge, he did say that he wanted to audit the Fed. Well, that's not enough. Auditing the Fed's a good first step to go, oh, look at how they've malfunctioned, how they wasted. But the point is, we can debug it right now. There's no need to audit. Just debug and then audit it after, okay? So, now, this software, the Let's, is the time bank software that is behind the Unilex resolution in the Millennium Declaration, C6, to restructure the global financial architecture with an alternative time-based currency. So the time you're going to spend to pay off your bank debt with interest is the same time that's good to pay off your debt to the central bank, no interest. So I was, like I say, every card game's got their guy they call the professor. And I just am reminded of the Rounders movie with Matt Damon with the scene at the Trump Taj Mahal in Atlantic City, the epitome of class in the poker world, when he's sitting there under the chandeliers and discussing the ethos of poker players. And just as every poker room across the country's got their guy they call the professor, who's pretty good at the odds, I was known as the professor at the Trump Taj Mahal. So, I did an earlier video where I explained the connection there, but isn't that fascinating that I can say to the Taj owner from the Taj professor, hey, Trump the Fed, and if they won't do the software right, just open up your Taj bank again and take our IOUs for time and we'll start up an alternate Trump currency and it'll work just as well and better than the federal stuff. So, either you take your Trump bankers, the Trump Taj Mahal bankers, and bring them to the Fed to do it right, or the Taj professor is going to be able to make fun of the former Taj owner. And I don't want to do that. I agree with so many other things he's for, you know. No more multiple vaccines with untested combinations for babies. Global warming, they lied to hide the decline as a hoax. He no wants peace with Russia. Um, anyway, so many good things that I have to agree with. And, uh, but still, continuing on, how would your getting an interest-free bank account at the Bank of Canada or the Fed or the Bank of England change your life? Well, if you're someone rich, nothing's going to change except you're not going to get any more interest. That's it. You're not going to get any more. You're going to get a whole bunch of workers now who are going to pay off their loans and you're going to get that interest-free money to pay you down and you're going to end up with a great big pile of interest-free money to equal your money that you had when you started it just won't grow no more so workers well like i say workers will immediately pay off all of their interest-bearing debts convert it to interest-free but they can do more they can now pull their credit and buy out their owners so that unions will become owners of their own shops and pride and, and excellence will become instilled again. But bosses too, organizers, the guys who had a good corporation with a lot of good employees, give them an open credit line and boom, you'll have 50 guys back at work in no time. So the workers cannot be oppressed because they're picking this boss and upping his hours per hour rate because he's worth it for his organizational skills and he's a good boss. So the point is both sides can benefit. Now, best of all, his prices go down when they're not being charged any interest. They can charge us less. So that's for the workers and the bosses. What about students? Well, students can be paid. Look, if we can pay doctors and my favorite poem, and let's call it Don's Tax. I'll pay Don's tax for army and police to handle strife. I'll pay Don's tax for so um, doctors, nurses who protect my life. I'll pay Don's tax for all engaged repairing road and sewer. I'll pay Don's tax for social servants helping out the poor. I'll even pay Don's tax for bureaucrats with no regret. I only object to paying any tax for interest on debt when the government could be running the chips itself interest free. So, if I don't mind Don pumping in brand new chips to hire doctors and nurses and pay them to provide great care, and then I chip in my share at the end, and if I don't mind him hiring road maintenance and infrastructure with brand new chips, and I'll take them from the workers and pay my tax, 
So why would I mind if he pays students to put in time at becoming useful, just like the doctors and the nurses, and I'll pay my share of tax to support the students and their learning. You get it how it would work? It's a back tax. Instead of taxing you up front and budgeting, you borrow as much as you need interest free and you tax at the end. And it works like King Henry's tallies. In 1100, King Henry the Great of England started his tally system, which was a stick where they printed 10 pounds of gold, split it in two. This he gave to the baron and said, go build a bridge in your place, use your gold, but this pays your tax. And he kept the stub in the treasury so that it would tally up with the grains. Perfect, interest-free government money used for 500 years till the Bank of Canada got it taken out. A Bank of England. So, that basically is how it would affect students, as well as doctors and nurses in the infrastructure who can be paid with government's new chips, because we'll take them for our work and then chip in our share after back tax. So, uh, now, how would it work? We've done the students. What about the homeless? Well, there are eight, 3 million homeless people in the United States, and there are 18 million empty homes. Think about that. As soon as they all get an interest-free credit card and they don't have to pay interest on the building, the only thing they do have to pay is depreciation. So like when King Henry built that bridge, well, it was going to last 50 years, so they taxed 2% of the 10 pounds of gold back every year for 50 years till they had to rebuild a new one. Same idea. Without interest, you still have to pay the depreciation and the upkeep, but the interest is usually the bigger amount. So, obviously, the homeless would all be housed within a week, and then everybody in lesser and cramped accommodations would be moving up into those empty homes. So, yeah, as soon as everybody gets a central bank account interest-free, suddenly you can all afford your housing. Wow, you eh? So, and then finally, you also got the aged and the, and the sick, and... Uh, you know, they simply have to live on their credit cards and then we write it off at the end and divvy it up and all chip in our share so that the aged whom we know put in a lifetime's worth of work but just ended up ripped off in the scorecard can now live out an end of luxury we can afford to chip in for. And the same thing for the sick and the, uh, and the uh, you know, the impaired. Finally, the fetal. Now, I want to give every fetus an interest-free credit line so that we can offer mama anything she's got to be paid to let him live and then see if the kid manages to pay it back, even if he has to move into a hotel. So I want, I think that the whole issue of abortion only makes sense when poverty faces the rest of the family with the extra mouth. But once there's no more poverty, I think having more kids around will be a lot of fun, don't you? So, that's everybody being taken care of, and if society can afford it to keep them alive, we will. And therefore, how many people are going to say, I still want to get rid of them? So, finally, refugees. Now, you know, I mean, NATO's bombed them in the Middle East and created refugees all over the planet with their military arms and now those refugees are escaping and with them of course are coming the mercenaries who are trained and will be able to wreak havoc in all the countries that they're being taken to like 800 guys all disappeared in one shot in germany wow a whole regiment you know so they're ready to be unleashed on the civilian populations all over the place and that's nothing to condemn refugees so the question is how can we make refugees happy to go home because other than that, it's going to become a problem. Well, let's say all of a sudden the Bank of Mexico offered interest-free loans for infrastructure repair and all those things. How many Mexicans are going to want to live in Cleveland? Got it? They're going to want to go home to Mexico. Same with Syrians. The deal is Ezekiel 18.8. 18, 18 says, you know, all you got to do is repent, atone, and go straight, and all your sins will be forgotten. Well, if we give them an interest-free credit line at our bank and say we're going to allow you to hire our unemployed to come and help you rebuild and bring you back to the status you were before we blew you up, I would think a lot of them would want to go home. But it's the only way, and it can only be done with enough money or enough chips. So, for the Donald, the Taj Mahal was the ideal example, and I've used casino chips 
as the ideal model in my, I keep saying, how come government's money loses its value year after year and my, casino chips do not? Same hardware. Inflation must be a software problem. So, this is a Mr. Spock move. We can pull off at the Fed and the central bank computers all over the planet. And we now have a grand opportunity with Donald Trump, who had the nerve to suggest an audit. Imagine that. Wow, that put a bullet in his back, you know. And that uh, Bush lied us into 911, that put a target on his back. Sorry, you know. A lot of things, a lot of cherished myths this iconoclast has shattered. And uh, I'm glad to see it. But the biggest one, he's got to debug the Fed. And the easiest way is to do Greece's plan B, do like Switzerland, simply give everybody an online account, but make it interest free so they can pay off their loan shark debts. And then watch the peace break out everywhere. Now, back a few years ago, Dennis Kucinich had Bill 2990, which would have ended the Fed and had Treasury take over. And they could have done it like they had in the past, using interest-free money like the Bank of Canada. But guess what? Almost no money reformers other than the American Monetary Institute group that he came from supported. Imagine all those money reformers who've been screaming about the Fed all their lives. And then comes the chance to end the Fed, have Treasury take over and maybe do it right. And they didn't support not a word. Well, they're on a shame list. No matter what they do in the future, they're always going to be asked, well, why didn't you support Kucinich? Well, this is a chance at a second reprieve for you guys. Okay, I'm going to be putting up a page at smartestmanonearth.ca slash Trumpers, where everybody whom I've sent this video to about how to trump the Fed We'll basically put you on the spot and I'll mention that you got it and then someday we'll see what you did with the information. This is now so easy. It's been proposed in two other countries and it's easy software and Donald already ran an interest-free casino bank. This is the greatest chance in the history of mankind to start the liberation from usurious debt. Isn't that neat? Now, I have got a page, Discus, D-I-S-Q-U-S, which lists all of the sites that use that platform, and Discus censors people. So that means that I can't leave pro-Trump messages at Breitbart. Imagine that. They don't censor it, but Discus censors their users. So... And, of course, with all the corruption we've seen with the shadow banning of Scott Adams at Twitter and with the uh, Google, you know, Hillary Clinton in and the first suggestion they offer is India instead of indictment. Well, the fix is in with Google and Facebook and, and Twitter and uh, YouTube. And the point is, there's nothing we can do about it. You can all switch over to Gab. Fine. Guess what? Private guys can do the same thing. The only way you will ever have recourse to a court is if these become public utilities. Then you can ask a judge, do they have a right to do this to me? Government? No, they don't. And then boom, they can't do it. But private guys have the right to do anything they want to you. So you have to understand there is no escape other than public utilities for these major social media functions. Need eh? So, they might have offended the Donald enough that he might spend a couple of billion to replace them with something quality. Open to all for inspection, you know? No more censorship in the backgrounds. Finally, my last video was uh, Pussy Grabbing Third Base in Sexy Safe 1970s. And I explained that in our generation, the first one where our ladies had birth control, and there was an era of no venereal disease, it was different from you people have experienced all your lives. So before you judge the males who um, whose ladies let them 
please judge your grannies who led us too okay so just understand that all this dick talk is silly we lived a different generation and how fast he got to third base <laughs> compared to others is irrelevant to the important issue of this guy has all the right life and death programs on his agenda and if you're not willing to help by making sure the Fed can't crash any of his reforms because he can't do anything without enough money but all he's got to do is import his Taj bankers stick them at the Fed and you'll know it'll be done right so I'm John the Taj Professor Turmel. Oh, final point. I was known as the professor at that Taj Mahal in the movies in my years of playing as a professional in the United States. So don't laugh when I bet that my education matching Mr. Spock's makes me a pretty good bet for being the smartest man on earth. Uh, but Donald's giving me quite a run. Bye-bye. <laughs>